Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog. And today we are gonna dive back into the comic book universe once again. And we're gonna talk about a mini series that we actually missed out on. Uh, you know, right after the time of Absolute Carnage, there was uh, some books coming out that, you know, involved Ravencroft, the asylum from uh, Marvel Universe. And I think I read some interviews where Frank Thierry was like, you know, it's pretty neat because, you know, I always wanted to tell stories about Arkham or something like that. Like he said something akin to that, you know, Arkham Asylum from DC Comics. And he said, well, and it, it dawned on us, you know, me and the editors and everyone, that there is an Arkham Asylum type place in the Marvel Universe called Ravencroft. And that there's a lot of history that has never really been explored with, you know, with that building. And I agree. I'm, you know, it's one of those things when you're trying to look for things in the Mar Marvel Universe that hasn't really been done and, you know, things you can kind of flesh out and, and add continuity to. I think that was kind of a neat idea because, you know, at first, you know, when I, a lot of writers, I think nowadays, they're like, oh, I want to change the origin of someone or I want to undo things and, you know, add new layers and stuff like that. And uh, and hoping that, you know, the movie versions will, will take from it, uh, because most people know that there's not a lot of money making comic books. But if, you know, one of your ideas gets picked up and put into one of the movies, I mean, well, in some cases, you barely even get a thank you. But in some cases, you might get an extra paycheck. Um, so I don't really think that was like the motivation here. I think genuinely Frank Thierry and a couple other people at Marvel were like, Hey, we have this place. It was the setting of absolute carnage. We could explore it some more. So I kind of, that's how, what I think anyway. I mean, I don't know if that's true or not, but that's how it feels reading the interview and, and just kind of seeing Frank online and following him on Twitter and kind of just being a fan of his in general. He seems to really look for things that he can kind of explore and not just for the sake of changing things, but just kind of to tell new, you know, new stories in those, you know, corners of each universe and stuff. And so Ravencroft is one of those that I think could be told, you know, could tell more stories about it. So when I was picking these up, I was like, you know, at first I was kind of against it because I think I even made a joke when we were talking about it. I was like, all right, that's cool that they want to do that to Ravencroft. But, you know, I was so burnt out on Absolute Carnage and I was so let down by that series overall that I kind of didn't want to see what Marvel was going to do. Like, I didn't want to see what they were going to explore. Even though I like Frank and I was, you know, excited to read what he would write, I still kind of stayed away from it for a little bit. I said, you know what, I need a little break from some of this and I need to go away. And I did. Remember uh, uh, Venom Island, I think it was, was a story that was coming out around the time of this. I didn't read Venom Island until like the fourth issue came out. And that's when like the first four issues were kind of donated to me by Golden Apple Comics. So I was like, oh, okay. Like they were gifted to me, not donated, but they were gifted to me as a going away gift uh, when I moved from LA. So I was, for four months, wasn't really diving into anything that Marvel was doing after Absolute Carnage because I was burnt out. Like I said, I was let down. But uh, but I do like Frank, I like his work. And so I'm glad I finally went back and reread these. But I did make a joke. I said, oh, you know what? With Ravencroft, they're probably just going to like do something silly where they... And you can go back and watch my older episodes that are around uh, the end of Absolute Carnage. I made an episode about Ravencroft and I think I said like, oh, they're probably just going to do something silly where they, uh, you know, they, they reveal that Cletus Cassidy had an ancestor and that ancestor, you know, was locked away at Ravencroft, you know, a couple hundred years ago or whatever. And, I, and, he's, and he's somehow going to be tied into the origins of Ravencroft because... You know that seems like a like a <laughs> I don't know like a corporate move, uh, you know, or it's like you kind of come up with the uh, these ideas. Like I've been in enough rooms and meetings and boardrooms and stuff, and where people come up with ideas, and that just seemed like one of those kind of ideas. So I made a joke about it. Little did I know it was going to be the real thing. <laughs> so, so there is a Ravencroft mini series that comes out uh, that's five issues. We will talk about that in a future episode. This one I want to try to hopefully keep as short as I can. I don't know how long this is going to go, but I'm already rambling enough. So you know, we'll see. I'll probably ramble for, you know some more. But this is called The Ruins of Ravencroft. So this is three one-shots that came out that lead up to that five-issue series. So we will cover this now. We'll cover the five-issue story you know, later on, maybe like in a couple weeks or so. Um, and then we'll go back into the Agent Venom stuff. And then after we kind of catch up on everything that we're supposed to do, Minimum Carnage, we'll do another Carnage Week, um, King in Black. Like we'll, once we catch up on all this stuff, then we'll probably this summer dive into the time that Peter Parker wore the black costume. And we'll get more into that. For now, I'll do the chillers, you know, where I'm like kind of reading a bedtime story type thing. We'll finish those and we'll get through all these other comics. And then maybe in the summertime, we'll get into the actual comic book version of the Alien Costume Saga. Uh, so for now, let's dive into Ruins of Ravencroft. Like I said, this is written by Frank Thierry. 
Um, and there's a very a, a various groups of artists on this book, so we'll kind of go through them, you know, or they'll pop their names up on screen um, as we get to, you know, their their stories, their chapters. Some of these, I have some images here to like remind me of stuff. So here I have um, Angel uh, Unzueta, and hopefully I'm not butchering your last name, um, is the modern day artist of this first story. And then there's a couple artists, I'll have the, the credits pop up right there. There's a couple artists uh, that are done for the flashback stuff for the Carnage story, the Sabretooth story, and the Dracula story. So there is three chapters in this book. And those three chapters, like I said, the first one focuses on Carnage and kind of his lineage. The second one deals kind of with Sabretooth, so you have a Wolverine story in there. And then the third one deals with Captain America and Dracula and Winter Soldier, or Bucky before he's Winter Soldier. Um, so it's kind of neat. So they're all kind of period pieces for the most part. But there's the main story that Angel draws, which takes place in modern day, uh, post absolute carnage, when I guess the city orders the destruction of Ravencroft so they can tear it all down and then build it back up. And now that they're going to rebuild it back up, they're going to have new people in charge of it. And they're each going to have like a certain say or a certain series of responsibilities. So obviously Mayor Fisk is one of the first ones and he shows up. The book starts with Misty Knight and uh, John Jameson, who is also Man Wolf. Um, he, they, you know, are talking and they're watching the building get destroyed. And then, you know, Wilson Fisk shows up, the kingpin, who's the new mayor of New York. And he's like, all right, so I ordered this place destroyed, but we're going to rebuild it. Like we're going to rebuild it immediately because I'm, I want a place for people who need help, you know, to go to. And the problem with Ravencroft was that it's this old building that has, you know, a lot of people in it that maybe have old values and things like that. And it's not progressive enough. Like, you know, he's the mayor. So he's trying to like play this card that he's like a good person. And so he's like, yeah, we're going to like clean this place up. We're going to bring in new doctors. We're going to bring in a new staff. And he goes, and actually, uh, one of the only people that are, that used to work here that will work here again we're going to have Ashley Kafka, obviously, uh, because I, you know, I believe that she's a really smart person, you know, who will help facilitate this new, uh, you know, direction I want to go in with this building. But also John Jameson. I want him to be head of security again, which Misty Knight is like, come on, John, you you idiot. Like, like, come on, why do you always fall into this trap and you always end up working for the bad guys? Because obviously she does not trust Wilson Fisk. Um, but while they're talking modern day, they come across this journal. And this journal is by someone who uh, it used to run Ravencroft, you know, many, many, many years ago, uh, generations ago even. And so uh, they start looking through this and learning the history of this place. And so the first story they come across is actually one about uh, Cortland Cassidy, who is uh, basically someone who's, uh, you know, came around about four or five hundred years ago uh, when the early settlers were coming in and they were, you know, deeming America the new world. Um, even though there was, you know, already people living here, obviously. And uh, and it's it's a story about him and his wife, who is a, a Ravencroft. So he's a Cassidy. She's a Ravencroft. So again, I started laughing because I was like, oh, my God, I kind of predicted this. <laughs> like I thought I, I, th I was like, oh, this is exactly what was going to happen. And I was like, I can't believe it. They're actually going to tell a Cletus Cassidy origin kind of story where he somehow tied to the birth of Ravencroft and I just rolled my eyes and I laughed and I was like oh my god this is ridiculous uh, but in true Frank Terry style he took that possibly corporate or editor's idea or maybe who knows maybe it was even his idea but he took that idea and he actually did something kind of neat with it like this issue what I like about it is it reminded me a lot of that movie uh, what was it called Bone Bone saw tomahawk, tomahawk bone saw, something like that. <laughs> a bone, yes, it's uh, it's got Kurt Russell in it. Uh, I'll have the I'll put the poster up right there, or some with the title. Um, but it's a uh, that was a neat movie. I saw it. Uh, I, I heard about it a while ago. I think Red Letter Media had talked at, about it and said they liked it a lot. Um, I'm a big Matthew Fox fan, so I was like, because uh, originally, like years ago, I wanted to cast him as Black Bolt from the Inhumans. Um, after I saw the Speed Racer movie, and I was like, oh, he would be great as Black Bolt. Um, and uh, and I like him as an actor. He's great in Lost and everything like that as Jack and stuff. So so I was like, oh, Matthew Fox is in it and Kurt Russell. Like, holy cow, I got to check that out. So I ended up watching the movie and loved it. It was really, really good. I think I live tweeted my reaction to it last summer uh, when I was living here in Florida. And, uh, and this kind of reminded me of it. It kind of has Cortland Cassidy and his wife um, kind of settling down. 
and then them hearing stories about these cannibals uh, that live outside of town, like the town that they're starting to nestle in. And uh, and so we start seeing these cannibals and it's like, okay, they're Native American, you know, which was something that was in the uh, Bone Tomahawk movie, I think it's what it's called. Um, and uh, and that movie had a group of cannibals that were Native American and they explained it by them being like victims in a way because they were pushed out of their native land and then only a few of them survived so they had to like sleep with their brothers and sisters and everything to like make more you know to have offspring and, and to continue their tribe but then they got violent or something like that or like I can't remember the water was contaminated or I can't remember but then they became like horrible cannibal who were like grabbing people and skinning them and eating them and stuff like that so it kind of reminded me of that I was like oh man like that is crazy that this reminds me of that movie um but kind of a little bit like in that movie um because you know there's old ancient rituals of like the wendigo and like you eat people and you absorb their strength and power um they've done movies like that i think there was a movie called ravenous uh with guy pierce that did that told that story and it was really really good um so this one is is more like the cannibals are hearing the voices of null so it's kind of taking something that we've heard about in you know our history our american history and they nullified it <laughs> so so basically these people were kind of driven mad by hearing the voice of null in their head and so they paint pictures of them and they paint pictures of animals and people with the spirals on their heads and stuff like that um so uh so then they go and they grab you know uh, people in the town one of them being Cortland cassidy's wife uh, mrs ravencroft and they drag her out uh, to, to eat her and then he goes out to save her and he try well, he tries to get people in town to come help him and they're like no we're not going out there those cannibals will do horrible things to us and he's like fine you cowards so he goes out and he single-handedly kills a bunch of the the cannibals uh, all by himself saves his wife turns out she slipped away so she actually wasn't in any major danger uh but she you know she kind of got out and then he loses it he goes back to town and he just starts killing regular people and uh, while he was in that cave after killing i guess some of the cannibals we don't really know what happened but something changed in him and he saw that painting on the wall of null and something changed in him so he started hearing the voice of null um so he goes back to town kills a bunch of people and they lock him up in like a shed they make like a shed with bars on it and he's essentially the first prisoner or the first uh they call him the first killer of the new world so he's like the first mass murderer of america apparently and uh and they they lock him up and so if, essentially he's the first inmate of Ravencroft because uh, they and they kind of name well they don't name the building after his wife uh, I think they name it after one of her descendants um, but uh, but they they lock him up in like a little shed with bars on it so that's kind of where the uh, first books I thought was going to end but then uh, she, uh, his wife shows up Miss Ravencroft and they start talking and he lures or he tricks her or cons her or something into opening the gate to let him out and he kills her and then goes and joins the tribe of the cannibals uh, and then in his eyes you can kind of see that he's losing it and he's got the spirals in his eyes and everything like that so he's kind of become one of them uh so that's where cletus cassidy apparently comes from is is that guy there uh and then <laughs> so you have this journal of jonas ravencroft who is a descendant like i said of mrs ravencroft who was married to cassidy at one point it doesn't wasn't clear if they had any kids i don't think uh so he might just be like a descendant of one of her brothers or sisters something like that and and so you know in the present day kingpin and misty knight and everyone find this book and as they're examining it reed richard shows up and he says all right i'm one of the other people that he's like i'm an actual doctor and if you're going to rebuild this place i worked out a few favors with the city of new york to be assigned to come be here and overlook the hiring of certain staff members like doctors uh and so uh, so reed richards is now part of the plan and then also um norman osborne as we know because if we did we were covering some of the spider-man stories i still have one more episode to talk about to wrap up the last remains thing so we'll get to that in the next few weeks uh, for sure but that one you know is more about norman osborne and how he was kind of in control of ravencroft with you know kingpin this is the story that leads up to that so this is the prequel to the story that leads up to that because <laughs> that's in the five issue miniseries and we'll get to that like i said in the near future so reed richards has joined the group and uh you know norman osborne has joined the group and then as they are exploring the grounds of this place of ravencroft they find a secret underground lab um so that's like the big 
you know, cliffhanger at the end of issue one. Issue two goes into, um, you know, you seeing like a Frankenstein, uh, Dr. Frankenstein kind of room where a bunch of hybrid creatures are being uh, formed and created. There's some nods to the Marvel Universe there, which are pretty cool. Um, and you find out that uh, Nathaniel Essex, who is uh, Mr. Sinister, one of my favorite villains from X-Men, he actually worked at Ravencroft uh, with Jonas, uh, Jonas Ravencroft. So, uh, so that was pretty neat to pull back the layers of that. And uh, he was there uh, kind of studying uh, Wolverine's body. And they, they brought Wolverine in like Sabretooth knocked him out somewhere, you know, out in the wild. And Mr. Sinister brought his body in and they're trying to steal his mutant ability in some way. Because you know how Mr. Sinister is? He's obsessed with like the Summers and Jean Grey bloodlines. Well, this is him kind of discovering the Logan bloodline, and he's trying to figure that out too. And Sabretooth is kind of his goon, so he's like a hired muscle that temporarily works at Ravencroft to help Mr. Sinister, who is just Nathaniel Essex at this point. Um, but they go into the history of Marvel. They talk about what happened after Cortland Cassidy got out and, you know, after the Civil War and everything like that, and, you know, different uh, uh, Captain Americas throughout the generations and things. They show Sh Shuma Garath, which is pretty cool. Uh, from, uh, I remember that character from the Marvel vs. Capcom 2 video game. Or maybe it was three. Maybe it was two. I think it, I can't remember which one. Uh, but uh, but is like a Doctor Strange, Cthulhu kind of uh, tentacled creature. Um, they mentioned that the headless horseman was actually a ghost rider. Uh, so I thought that was kind of cool. And so just one of those things where Frank Terry he's he has fun like you know putting these things into the Marvel universe and kind of twisting our own history to fit the Marvel history and stuff, which I kind of liked. Um, and then they you know, talk more about Jonas Ravencroft and kind of what he did. So, uh, and how he helped capture other characters from the Marvel Universe and was studying them too. So, uh, so this is just neat to see because I'm a big Sabretooth and Wolverine fan. I lo I've always loved that feud between them. And uh, I remember there was a time in the late 80s, early 90s where it was like Sabretooth was attacking Wolverine every year on the same day and then he revealed to Wolverine dude it, it's this is your birthday that he, he never wondered why I attack you this day every year it's because it's your birthday and Wolverine's like well I don't remember my birthday and he's like yep well I do and that's why I show up here to torment you and if there's any women in your life I torment them too or whatever because Sabretooth is a sadistic creepy dude um so he's portrayed as such here uh, but eventually Wolverine's healing factor kicks in and he's able to to rise up and save uh, this, or temporarily save this uh, doctor, this woman who's trying to help him. But then she ends up getting killed by Sabretooth. Um, or she turns into a wolf first, <laughs> and then they fight. Um, but then she gets taken down. Um, and Sabretooth is, you know, alive pretty much because Mr. Sinister helps take down that that lady. So, uh, so then back in present day, all these creatures, like, pop out of the ground and attack our... our uh, group of people like Kingpin and everyone um, and Misty Knight and John Jameson and Ms. Uh, Reed Richards uh, so they have to fight back and as the creatures are coming out they have to slam the door and they're holding it and that's where issue two ends which leads us into the final part which is uh, the Dracula Captain America story which takes place in like the 40s or 50s like around that time um, this is a, where actually where Norman Osborn shows up he grabs the journal of Jonas uh, or I'm sorry is it no it's John Jameson yeah Norman Osborn's I think here at some point but John Jameson turns into man wolf and then we also get winter soldier and uh iron fist uh misty knight falcon and luke cage all show up too to help out so these are the friends that reed richards called in and like i said winter soldier's there too and he picks up the journal of jonas ravencroft and says weird these dates that are written in this journal i was here for those and they're like you were and he says yeah he goes but i was a different person back then and they show him actually as bucky working with Captain America and they had heard that there was some experimentation going on in this building um, and they also heard that uh, possibly there was a uh, you know other threats that were that were leading them to this building one of them is actually Loki I believe as a god of mischief he like checks himself in uh, just to mess with Midgard a little bit so I thought that was again Frank Terry just kind of having fun but it kind of working it doesn't ruin anyone's continuity and just kind of fun stuff uh, you know so uh so then you find out that Dracula is here working with um, Nathaniel Essex and a couple other people and they're th this is where you're seeing the corruption of Ravencroft as a building where they no longer really care about helping people and then there's evil mad scientists that end up starting to work there that start spreading like like a cancer through this building of of, of evil like they start coming up with uh, you know really 
grotesque experiments to do on the patients and stuff. And so that's what they mean, like in modern day earlier when they were saying, we want to tear this place down, get rid of its history and rebuild it. Um, so that way we can start anew. And it's because at one point this place really did set out to help people. And then throughout the years, people like Nathaniel Essex and Dracula and these other uh, mad scientists and stuff corrupted the place. Um, so I don't know, of, of course, tearing something down and rebuilding it doesn't mean it's not going to get reinfected for sure. Um, but it's still, you know, it's something a politician would say for sure, like uh, Wilson Fisk. Um, so I really like Terry's writing on this book. I think he does a really good job kind of ex doing every character some level of justice uh, and keeping them in keeping with their character, like in their, um, like how they are, like personality traits and things like that and motivation and what they would do in certain situations. Like, it's just kind of fun. I mean, Captain America, unfortunately, doesn't get a ton to do in this one. I'm a big Cap fan, so I was kind of hoping for more from him. But um, as a Nathaniel Essex fan and uh, as a fan of like Bucky and and uh, and all these other characters that are in this book, I thought he did a pretty, uh, Frank did a pretty good job. And the art team is awesome. Like, I really love the flashback stories in each issue drawn by the various artists. I think they did a great job. It's it's a lot of fun to read and flip through. So uh, then they get to a point at the end where Jonas Ravencroft looks like he's going to get the one-up on one of the evil scientists. But after everything that's gone on, after all the horrible things he's seen, he's like, I can't do it. I can't. This place has my name on it. And look what we've become. And he ends up killing himself. And, and as he does, the journal in his hand that's unfinished, he drops it to the ground. And that's the book that this group now in modern day has found. Um, so now we have a new team in place. We have, you know, Wilson Fisk, who's kind of as the mayor overseeing everything. We have Dr. Reed Richards helping with some of the staff and helping transport some criminals here. Um, so on the last one of the last pages, we see a group of criminals being brought in. Um, I think Doppelganger is one of them, like in the front there uh, on the ground. Uh, but yeah, I think Sabretooth might be there too, or I can't remember. There's a couple of different villains uh, that, you know, the image is up there, hopefully on screen. And, uh, and then you have, you know, Norman Osborn popping in and being like, okay, I'm the person who's going to actually run the day-to-day -day operations for this place. And everyone's like, wait, you were just a patient here like two weeks ago during the absolute carnage thing. And now you're going to run this place. And he's like, well, you know, I was under the influence of Cletus Cassidy. He's like, so I wasn't actually crazy um, or, you know, you know, disturbed in any way or, or broken in any way. Um, he's like, I'm going to, you know, so I'm, I'm now of right mind. Of course, he's like, of course, but I'm going to have supervision from Reed Richards. I'm going to have supervision from Mayor Fisk. Um, and, and I'm only going to, you know, be part of hiring some staff members. But, you know, most of this is being done by other people. He's like, so, yeah, I'm coming in. I feel comfortable. So this is when he starts to, you know, realize as he's coming in the building that there's that secret underground lab where everyone went down and they were fighting those creatures. The creatures were like, at, you know, they were at the end of issue two, they were coming out to stop the heroes. But the heroes... Um, I think like they were just holding the door shut and then when they opened the door again all the creatures were gone so it was just kind of like a a weird fluke thing that happened i think there was another attack with some more creatures but the heroes obviously overcame them because you know that's what they do so that was kind of like rushed through kind of quickly uh but overall i thought the pacing of these three issues the setup and the fact that they did something that i made a joke about and laughed at but they actually made it semi-interesting I got to give Frank Thierry credit. I honestly, I was like, this was not bad, actually. Uh, I, 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 if I would have just had the m mental perception that it was just going to be like this dumb, you know, way to tie Cletus Cassidy into Ravencroft, you know, that's what I thought it was. And I laughed at it before. Now seeing that idea taken, but other interesting things done well and with characters that I think don't get a ton of spotlight but I kind of glad that they do like Misty Knight and uh, John Jameson stuff. It's like, it's cool to see those characters working together along with like Reed Richards and uh, Winter Soldier and Luke Cage and Iron Fist and stuff. I was like, yeah, it's just kind of neat. And so I, I dug it. So this book ends with Norman Osborn coming to like, you know, run the place. Now he knows there's an underground area, which is where he's going to eventually build his stuff. He's going to build a, a, a secret room in his office now that he has an office. So this is kind of laying the breadcrumbs for all of that, that we've already talked about in the Spider-Man books. 
Uh, but I wanted to just go over this here and talk about these three issues with you guys and see what your thoughts were. Have you read the Ruins of Ravencroft miniseries or series of one shots, I should say? Um, this is the Carnage issue, the Sabretooth issue, and the Dracula issue. So if you have read them, you have any thoughts about them, uh, whether you agree with me, disagree with me, if you think I missed anything, let me know down below. As always, we'll continue our conversation down there. And this does uh, say at the end to be continued in Ravencroft which is the next five issue miniseries, like I said earlier, uh, we will get to that uh, probably in the next few weeks. Um, I'm just gonna need time to read that. I'm reading a lot of comics right now, King in Black, um, this, you know, alien costume stuff, chillers, like there's a lot of stuff I'm going through right now. Um, so I'll, I'll try to cover all this and do all this the best I can and get them out in hopefully a coherent fashion for you guys. And hopefully you guys stick around and keep enjoying them. And if you do enjoy these videos and you like hearing about the history of the Venom universe and the characters that tie into Venom, in places like Ravencroft and all that, give us a like, give us, a, you know, subscribe to us, share us, uh, you know, pass us on to any friends of yours that might like this stuff too. And, uh, and obviously let's keep growing this Venom family of ours because we are Venom. So thank you so much. I will see you all in the future. Peace.